who hang behind 20 bodyguards and won't be seen in public. They're the people that are actually on the street. And I have nothing but respect for those people. And it doesn't matter what... Well, I was about to say, I happen to know the inside scoop on Glenn Beck. He, he, he's obsessed with my show. <laughs> and, and no, no, no. And he's like an empty suit who takes acting lessons all day. And you're right, 20 bodyguards, totally scared, five bodyguards at his house. And I'm not, you know, I don't want to die, but I don't have any bodyguards. I'm not, you know. Uh, well, I mean, you got... <laughs> oh, yeah. This well, is I, worth like 20 bodyguards, you know. <laughs> uh, well, I'm mean, actually, for tactical up close, I got a uh, Reaper 308. Anyways, the issue is, I got a couple of guns. And, and hey, I bought that gun for guess how much? Five Gs. Guess how much it's worth now? $25,000? Yeah, about 15 to 20. Yeah, yeah I seen him selling online. Yeah, and, uh, you know, the good news is I bought a couple more before that. So, Jesus I mean, my, my, my issue is, <laughs> I don't want to get into guns. It's mm -hmm. kind of obnoxious, but I got a couple. <laughs> I'll leave it that way. And they're distributed all over the nation, and they're all mine. And they've made more, and they've gone up more than gold, which I also own a bit of. And uh, you know, but let me ask you something. Then, what about the gun industry, the gun lobby? You know what I mean? When you got a guy like Wayne Lapierre, uh, Lapierre, like, don't you think that he does more harm to the cause by not even acknowledging the deaths of people and just? He knows that they're going to, I mean, I'm not saying the NRA's part because it's kind of establishment. It's actually been anti-gun in the past. If you look, it was set up with northern soldiers, mainly Irish immigrants, never had shot. And so you could have like one southerner kill ten northerners. So they started the National Rifle Association. Going, if we ever have another war, people need to know how to shoot. Sc you know, scary as hell going against folks on how to shoot who'd grown up doing it. So that's what it started as. Then they supported the 68 Gun Control Act. We basically took over the NRA, the, the Libertarian Constitutionalist. We took it over. Uh, and so now it's walking the walk because it because it, it well I, I, the the complaints I hear about it from people is that they say they only want specific people to have guns. In other words, they want prominent white Christian Americans to have guns, but when they're in the hands of people like the Black Panthers, other people who have self determination. When have they criticized that? No, no, I'm just saying that these are the criticisms that I've But that's made up. In fact, they, in, fact, in fact, I've had Buzz Bissinger say I should be killed and stuff on CNN, and they go, Alex Jones is for guns because he wants black people to kill themselves, and the Klan is pro-gun, so blacks kill themselves. And the truth is the Klan's the ones that got the first gun laws passed at the end of the Civil War, so blacks couldn't have guns. I, I, so, I mean, it may, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with your point. I'm getting directly at the point that I hear this about the NRA. It's like they want blacks to kill themselves with guns, but they don't want blacks to have guns. That's actually not what I'm. But I think uh, it's not so much what you're saying. I'm not criticizing what your stance is. I'm saying that they seem disingenuous about it because they don't speak to the community. I don't think they have. It's like, what, are these people, they're so brave and so uh -huh. strong, and yet they won't send a car full of three people into a black community to say, hey, you know what? These are your rights concerning gun laws. The next time you're thrown in prison by police that think you don't know your rights and think you're an easy vic for them to make money and, and, and keep you in prison, this is what you can do to keep yourself out. That's why they seem disingenuous. Oh, I agree with you. Because they don't go to well, the black Well, well here's the deal. Most of these people. And they keep them. Sure, sure. Wayne LaPierre, I've actually been in an event he was speaking at. The guy was shaking for him to speak. I, I mean, here's the deal. You've got totally disconnected predominantly white, but there's also, I've been at these things, it's, it's everybody's there. They all like the same, I don't care if they're Hispanic, black, white, they're all totally focused, totally fake, and totally, because mm -hmm, they understand it's all a business meeting. And everybody's playing it as safe as they can at these events. And yes, the establishment types like that are so cloistered, so separated, so compartmentalized, where they go to the country club, they go to church, they do this, that they don't even know what planet they're on. So, so with the NRA, they just know that if they play along with Obama any and go, yes, we're very sad, that'll be spun against them. Right. Um, you know what? For me, someone once told me that it's better to talk to someone than about them. You know what I mean? I agree. So I, well, listen, I, you've I, seen I, me in New York. No, 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 but that's what I'm saying. I, would, I go out on the street. I would totally be willing to have a conversation with people. And please contact for people from the NRA to discuss what what sort of advice or what legal precedent are you setting up so that people who are victims of home invasion, victims of robbery, victims of every crime imaginable, you know what I mean? I don't want to turn everything into the shootout at the OK Corral.
but at the same time, I see an entire generation of my people being incarcerated, being victimized simply because they don't understand their their rights under the law. Well, see, that's why I love Ron Paul. You know, the NRA should be a civil rights organization. It shouldn't just be be difficult. I've said that. It, it should not just be defending the Second Amendment because they all interconnect. That's why I love Ron Paul. He'll give a speech about the CIA bringing in the drugs to destroy the communities. Look, you want to fix the communities. Now now they've destroyed everybody so bad, as Ron Paul said, you got to keep welfare going because you got to wean people off over 20 years. We're already so screwed. But you've got to quit shipping the drugs in. You've got to decriminalize, and Mexico will get a lot better overnight. But this is the United the, States. And, and this is the other thing that I said. You know what? If people, and I, I, I always tell, you teach more with love than you do with hatred. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? If, if I can go to those rappers who rhyme about weed and I can tell them, hey man, do you realize that your fan base is being criminalized and thrown in jail, that they're being having their rights- No, no, they criminal. train them to right. put on a uniform no, 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 no. that me, the police have been trained to attack. But let me just finish my point. If those are your fans, why aren't you educating them about the rights that they have in terms of marijuana? Why aren't you educating about the way that they can legally protect themselves from this? The conversation in America shouldn't be, you know what, are we going to legalize guns or not? No, you're never going to get rid of them. You're the rappers to should be organizing, not just people that, saying, get involved, here's how you protect yourself, get the, a medical deal. On the weed side of it, too, you know what? At some point, the conversation stopped, and it should definitely stop being about whether we're going to legalize or not. The conversation needs to be now, are we going to legalize or decriminalize? What's better for the populace? What's better for people's rights? What's better per individual state? What's better to create well, Once revenue? you bring money into it, 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 it that, that's the surest way to, you, they call it legalization, but if you legalize but regulate, but have it at the state level, it will, it will absolutely shut it down. Uh, and and be a huge tax base. And the saddest thing I hear is when people hit up my Twitter or the Facebook and they say, hey, Technique, you know, how can you be for marijuana legalization? What if someone got into a car while they were high and drove? And I'm like, dude, alcohol's legal. What if somebody got drunk? Well, marijuana makes you actually drive safer, probably. What if someone got drunk and got into a car and Somebody's smoking pot driving 45 in the slow lane over there scared. <laughs> Anyways. They stop every five miles for drive through yeah. Anyways, it's all crap. Listen, there's going to be bad stuff happening in the world. Anybody that tries to sell you on, let's do this. Let's take liberties. I heard a guy on the radio this morning going, let's have licenses to be able to buy alcohol. And, you know, a license to be a drinker as an adult. The nanny state isn't going to save us. It's all about cartels. They may, look, prohibition was over after nine years, as you know, a year early. The very same entities went and lobbied them to get drugs illegal that you could buy at the corner drugstore. There was much less heroin, cocaine use. You could buy it at the local drugstore. Laudanum, you name it. They made it illegal. They made it cool. Now the dealers had the nice cars. Everybody thought it was fun. They got into it. And it's a total fraud, absolutely, uh, to young people out there. Never use illegal drugs. Don't go on the prescription psychotropics. The least of our problems is marijuana. Decriminalize marijuana, not because it's good. I think overall it's destructive to a lot of people. <laughs> I but, agree. But, well, okay, fine. <laughs> now, I think a lot, there are a lot of potheads that are eating pizza all day. But the point is, <laughs> is that, <laughs> is that, uh, Jesus is, uh, no, no, I know, but some people. The point is, is that it's much more destructive to make it illegal so the system has an excuse to throw people on the slammer and put them into the criminal culture. Look, here's my issue about marijuana. I know there's a lot of this high-end marijuana that actually makes you think and, 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 and has medical uses. The general public smoking a bunch of cruddy crap that makes you feel like you've been run over by a truck. Mm. And so, see, that's an elitist thing. Uh, I mean, people that can, like Joe Rogan, my friend, I mean, if Joe Rogan's around, I've said this a few times, he goes like, hey, try this. I, for five hours, I feel like I could do equations or something. But that's super high-end marijuana, different than the stuff that makes you feel like you've drank three bottles of Jack Daniels. No, I definitely think that's correct. And m more than just that, there's an old saying by a, a rap group I grew up listening to, uh, Nice and Smooth, and in hip-hop, they said, uh, too much of anything makes you an addict. You know, it's, it's, a, it's really about moderation in, in, some, in some sense of the word. And I think that's what people don't realize in terms of where public education has failed people. You have a class about calculus that people have to take. You know, most people- Don't uh, want to do that. It's not just that, or, or a chemical class where a Bunsen burner, unless you work as a chem major uh, in college- You don't need it. Or you're building your own meth lab. How the fuck do you need to use something like that? You know, but where are the classes on parenting? 
that you're all going to have to do at some point. Why don't high schools have classes on parenting? Why don't they have classes to teach people how to interact with the police so that they don't become the victim? Because they won't. Listen, did you see in Arizona? I'm not where saying, they, no, we're not talking about why. I'm just saying, I'm, that's, that's. No, but did you see in Arizona, yeah. did you see in Arizona where they have, uh, guys, look it up, we can pull it up. The biggest prison company out there, it's just changed its name. They now are the security at the schools, and they literally are training the kids on how they're going to be prisoners when they get out of school. And now they have these agreements where 90% occupancy has to be agreed on in the private prisons. It's official, like Tulia, Texas, where they locked up the entire black population in the prison because the local boss hog owned it. Uh, so, so, so that's why that is. The schools are becoming prisons. This is a prison right. planet. I, I mean, my whole deal is don't underestimate how incredibly predatory the globalists are. I mean, they want to suck your energy out of you while killing you, and soon they're gonna have all the robots, and not just drones, but factory robots. They, the elite all says in their publications, like Bill Joy's famous article, Why the Future Doesn't Need Us, that they're going to kill us. And see, that isn't something to scare people. That's why all the race stuff and all the fighting and all the crap doesn't matter. In the final equation, I don't care if you're some rich white yuppie or some poor inner city white person or whatever it is, you are having chemical and bioweapons put in the air, the food and the water. They're testing on you, just getting ready for their big move because they already have the life extension technologies. And the motive is... The mortal technique is they don't want you to have that. Like the guy says, I will destroy your seed forever and last the Mohicans. The globalists, all ancient groups were into that. They want all of our seed destroyed. We're not going to be part of the future. The ultimate Roman takeover was to kill the whole population and salt the earth. The globalists are salting the earth with GMO while building their underground seed vaults. It's Moonraker. Right. Ian and, Fleming, MI6, wrote that. And, and, Moonraker's real. And when people say to me, they say, oh, you know, are you, are you drinking that left-wing uh, Kool-Aid? I always say to them, it tastes just as good as the right-wing Monsanto's milk. Because Damn no matter right. which one you want and which one you're willing to, to, to absorb, I think you have to get past this paradigm. And I think that's where programs like this and what I do, you know, we don't have to agree about every single thing, but what we do agree about is that we don't want people to believe everything that we say we want people to question everything full spectrum analysis yes but then they can also go into the extreme where without proof people just make up well this guy's this or this guy's that in closing the whole bin laden raid zero dark 30s torture porn i'm gonna do a review next week i finally torture saw it porn wow. uh the the uh martyr uh, tell us about the music after you get into your take on uh bin laden and all the rest of it the martyr is a 100 percent free album and when I say free, you can go to Viper Records right now and you can get it. It features all of my peoples from Rebel Arms. Big shout out to them. Uh, Poison Pen, Diabolic, G.I. Joe, I, I, The Circle, Hassan Salam, CF. Who am I leaving out? Point is, it's up there at the Viper Records site. Everybody in that Southpaw, big shout out to him. Um, basically, everybody that I came up with, Swave Seva, um, all the people that I have worked with over these years have been a part of this. We gave it for free, and when I say free, you don't have to fill out a survey. No 20-second Vivo commercial. You press one button. It's an absolutely free album. And the beauty of it was that I wanted to show people, you don't have to die for revolution, Alex. That's not the point. Got to stop believing in the system. You have to live for revolution. That's what they're afraid of. Yeah, I like of. that. They're afraid of that. You don't have to die for revolution. You got to live for you it. You have to live for it. Change your my it, life. It's, it's easier for someone to sit there and say, you know, I'm going to go out in a blaze of glory tomorrow, and I'm really going to make them pay, as opposed to say, you know what? I'm going to go through the painstaking suffering of raising a boy and two little girls in this damn near fascist society in order to raise them to look at the world differently and to see what it's a long it haul is. beautifully said uh, let me ask you this the immortal technique that sounds like evergreen or an idea that transcends time tell me what immortal technique means and i came up with that name well originally you know <laughs> when i was incarcerated uh my name was just technique that's just what i went by and i, I always remember there was a Native American trustee named Judge. He brought me a pen and a paper while I was in the hole. And I wrote a song on the first record I had called uh, The Prophecy. And I thought to myself, you know, in order for me to, to get my message across, 
it's going to have to span years of time. You know what I mean? What's going on right now, as you've pointed out, as I've pointed out through history, has happened before.